afternoon everyone, my name is Regina Esfoli and I'm your mathematics teacher. So before we start our lesson, let us first have a prayer and ready yourself for the lesson itself. our lesson let us try to remember some things the first one is pray eat sleep and stay fit the second one always wear your face mask when you are outside of your homes and the third one is observe social distancing so, the first three components of statistics collection organization and presentation of data are being discussed so statisticians also analyze data to obtain useful information from them so anyone what are the different bars or charts that we have encountered in presenting data sir the graphs or charts that we had discussed were bar graph, histogram, line graph, circle graph, or pie chart and pictograph. Very good. So as you can see, those are the different bars and graphs that we are using in presenting data, especially in statistics. Now, who can differentiate them one by one? In presenting data, bar graph and histogram use bars, Line graph uses points and lines. Pictograph uses pictures and circle graph uses pi as a whole. All right. Very good. It seems that you fully understand this lesson in the previous week. So before we proceed to our new lesson for this day, I prepared a short activity. So class, this is a group activity and I will group you into four right after I finished you the giving of instruction. So the groupings will be like this. Group M will be the students residing in Barangay Mahal na Pangalan. Group A will be the students residing in Barangay Wawa. Group T will be students residing in Barangay Pambisan. And group H will be the students residing in Barangay Pachoka and other barangay that are not mentioned earlier so class this activity is good for three minutes only are my instructions clear okay so for today's activity what you need is the coins or different or stacks of coin so use the coins to duplicate the seven stacks given above so each stack represents a number in a set of data. So you're going to arrange the stacks in order to the number of coins in each stack. So you are going to start with the stack containing the least number of coins and end with the stack containing the greatest number of coins. So you are going to record the number of coins
time is up. Now we're done with the activity, so let's try to figure out the concept or the meaning of that activity in our lesson. So as you can see, the remodeled stack of points are be like this. So you have 7, 11, 6, 11, 8, 10, and 17 coins respectively. Now, if we are going to arrange these coins from least to greatest, we will have a stack like this. The stocks will be like this, 6, 7, 8, 8 10, 11, 11, and 17. So as you can see, if we arrange the stock of points from least to greatest, we will have 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 11, and 17. And once we're done, arranging the stack of points, we can now answer the different processing questions that are involved in our activity. So let's try those ones. Let's try to answer the question. What is the middle number of the stacks? Now, what do you think is the answer? So, the middle number of the stack should be 10. Next. What is the most frequent number of your stacks? Okay. So the answer should be 10 also. Another one. So as you can see in a given stocks, we arranged or we try to fairly distribute the stock of coins and the result will be like this. So my question is, what should be the average of the stock? All right, that is also 10. Now let's try to unlock difficulties. So, what did you observe on your previous activity? Anyone? All right, very good. So, as you can see, class, that activity has something to do with our lesson for today since our lesson is all about the measures of central tendency of ungrouped data. So before we proceed on the lesson, let us try first to read the different objectives of our lesson. The first one is define the mean median and mode of the ungrouped data the second one is determine the measures of central tendency your mean median and mode of statistical data and calculate the measures of central tendency of ungrouped data so these objectives will be able to attain at the end of our lesson okay so the first measures of central tendency of ungrouped data is what we call the mean. The, the mean commonly called the average of a set of n numbers is the sum of all numbers divided by n. So it is the most popular among the measures of central tendency for it is widely used. It indicates a point around the values in the distribution balance wherein it is also affected by extreme values. So when we say extreme values, so those are numbers in a given set of data wherein somehow smaller 
than the number itself or bigger than the given set of data. And when we are seeing this kind of symbol, so this is also known as X bar or somehow we can call the mean. Am I clear? So in our activity, if we add all the coins, we will get 70 coins. Now class, my question is, how do we get the mean if the mean would be equal to 10? Anyone? Okay. To get so, the mean, we will add first the set of items, then we will divide it by the number of items, which is 10. Very good. In our next... The computation of the mean is very simple. To get the mean, simply add all the scores in your distribution and divide it by the total number of values. The formula for the computation of the mean are as follows. So x bar or your mean is equal to the summation of xi over n, wherein x bar is your mean itself, xi is the scores, and when you are seeing this kind of symbol, that is summation of x, wherein the sum of all the scores, and n is the total frequency. In our computation, we have all the stock of coins yielding to the sum of 70 divided by how many stocks are there? We have 7. So 70 divided by 7 is equal to 10. Do you have any question about the mean? If there is none, let's proceed to the median. So from our activity, we arrange the coins from lowest to highest. We have 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 11, and 17 stock of coins respectively. So class, my question is, what is the middle number on that given set of data? Yes? Okay, very good. That is 10. So now, how can we find the median here? The median is 10 because it is placed in the middle of the set of data. Okay, so since the number of items is add 7, we will just look for the middle value or middlemost number of that given data to get our median. How about this one? So for our next example, we have 6, 2, 1, 4, and 3. Now class, what do you think is the median here? The median is 3. The median is 3. Now how do you think so? I can say that 3 is the median because if we arrange the data from least to greatest, we will find 3 in the middle. That's right. Very good. It is important to arrange first the set of data from least to greatest to get the median or the VDEL value. And as you can see, if we arrange our given data, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6 respectively. And finding the middlemost number, we have 3. Correct. Okay, so let's try another example. What if the number of items is even and another stock of 8 coins is being added? So then we will have a data like this. 7, 11, 6, 11, 8, 10, 17, and the added 8 stock of coins. So what are we going to do first? We're going to arrange the data from least to greatest. That's right. Very good. Now, who wants to arrange the data from least to greatest? Yes? Data, 6, 7, 8, 8, 10, 11, 11, 17. So, as you can see, we have 6, 7, 8, 8, 10, 11, 11, and 17. Now, class, if I say that the median here is 9. Now, my question is, how do we get 9 as the median. We're going to arrange the data from least to greatest. 
Okay, so that is the first thing to do. Data, 6, 7, 8, 8, 10, 11, 11, 17. So we have, once we arrange the data, we have 6, 7, 8, 8, 10, 11, 11, and 17 coins, respectively. We got 9 as the median because by adding the two middle numbers, which are 8 and 10, and divided by 2. Okay, so as you can see, if we add the two middle most number, that is 8 and 10, and then we will have an answer of 18 divided by 2, so that our median is 9. So that is correct. So in finding the median, what do you think is the first thing to do? The first thing to do in finding the median is to arrange first the data from least to greatest or vice versa. That's right. What is the difference in solving for the median of the data containing an odd number of items and a data containing an even number of items? In finding the median for the data containing an odd number of items, we are just going to look for the middle value or number, while if the data contain an even number of items, we will add the two middle numbers and divide it by two. The median is the middle score of for a set of data that has been arranged in order from least to greatest or vice versa. Very good. Okay, so from the given exercises, class, how will you define the median? The median is the middle score for a set of data that has been arranged in order from least to greatest or vice versa. Excellent. So the median also Median. Median is the middle number when the number in a set of data is arranged in ascending or descending order. It is the value in the distribution table which divides an arranged distribution into two equal parts. So the arrangement of data in this manner is called array. So as you can see class, median has a symbol of this. So it is also can be read as x squared. x squared is equal to n plus 1 over 2, wherein x squared is the median and n is the total frequency. So we are using this formula in order for us to find the position of our median. For our example, Okay, guys. So let's try this example in order for us to determine if our formula for median is correct. So we have 5, 7, 11, 15, 17, 21, and 22 numbers. So applying the formula, we have the total number of this frequency is 7 plus 1. So you have 8 divided by 2. That's why we have 4. So if we are going to find the fourth number in our given set of data, that will be equal to 15. So therefore, we can say that the median of this set of data is 15. Am I clear? Very good. Okay, class. Is median clear to you? Very good. Since it is clear, let's proceed to the mode. So let's take again the example for our first given set of data, which are seven stack of points. So you have 7, 11, 6, 11, 8, 10, and 17. Now class, if I say that the mode here is 11, why do you think it is the mode? Anyone? The mode is 11 because it appears twice in the set of data. Very good. Since 11 is the most frequent number in this set of data, then we can say that the mode here is 11. Am I clear? Next. How about this one? So the given set of data is 2, 3, 1, 4, 5, 3, 1, 4, and 4. Class, what do you think is the mode here? The mode is 4 because it appears the most in the set of data. Okay, the mode is 4 because as you can see, we have three fours in our given set of data. How about, how many ones do we have? 2. 
two. How many threes? Two. How Three. many fours? Three. So that's why we can say that since four appears thrice for the most in the set, then we can say that this is the mode for this set of data. Are we clear? Very good. Okay, class, so let's take another example. How about this set of data? 2, 3, 1, 4, 5, 3, and 1. So what do you think are the modes or mode that are present in this set of data? The modes are 1 and 3. So according to your classmate, the modes are 1 and 3. So based on our illustration, why do you think that in this given set of data, the modes are 1 and 3. The modes are 1 and 3 because it appears twice on the given set of data. That's right. Since 1 and 3 appears the most in this set of data, then we can call it the modes. And always remember, class, if we have two modes present in this given set of data, then we can call it bimodal. From the word itself, by means two, modal means mode. So take note of that. Are we clear? Okay. Now class, what if I add four in this given set of data? And then we will have this two, three, one, four, five, three, one, four. My question is what will be the modes now? Anyone? The modes will be 1, 3, and 4. Okay, very good. So the modes will be 1, 3, and 4. And if we have three or more modes, we call the set of data as multimodal. So multi means many. Always remember these prefixes. Are we clear? Very good. What if I have this data? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What do you think is the mode here? None, sir. Very good. So what do you call to this set of data? No mode, sir. Excellent. So as you can see, if there is no frequent number pres present in this set of data, then we can say that it is a no mode. Are we clear? Yes, very good. So since we're done with the, some illustrations, I will ask you now, how can you define the mode? Mode is the data values that appear the most in the set. Okay, very good. So as you can see, class, the mode is the number that occurs most often in a set of data. A set of data can have more than one mode. So that is what you call the bimodal, multimodal, and especially the no mode. If all the numbers appear the same number of times, there is no mode for that set of data. And the symbol for mode, like this, can be read as x hat. Are we clear? All right, class. Since we're done with the discussions of the measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode, is everything clear to you now? Okay, since everything is all right, well, kindly go back to your previous group. Again, group M will be res students residing in Mahal na Pangalan. Group A, students residing in Barangay Wawa. Group T, students residing in Barangay Pambisan. And group H are students residing in Patsyoka and other barangays that are not mentioned earlier. So today I'm going to give you an activity entitled Write Me Down and Show Me and it is good for 10 minutes. So I will be giving you five questions and for each question, 
you are going to write your answer on your answer sheet. Make sure your answer are visible so that everyone can see it click clearly. You don't need to write your solution, just the final answer. Is that clear? Any clarifications about the instruction? Okay, let's start. For problem number one, read each problem carefully and try to answer the question quickly as possible. Start. For problem number one, Group M from Barangay Mahal na Pangalan will be the one to give their answer. So what is the answer for number one? Alright, the answer is 33 degrees Celsius. Now let's go to problem number two. Okay, for problem number two, here is the question.
stop. For problem number two, group A students residing in Barangay Wawa will be the one to give their answer. Okay, so what should be the answer in problem number two? All right, the answer is five. Now let's go to problem number three. Let's start for the problem number three. Stop. All right, for problem number three, group T, students residing from Barangay Pambisan will be the one who will give their answer. So what should be the answer in our problem number three? The answer is 31 kilograms. Very good. Now let's go to problem number four. For problem number four, let's start.
stop. For problem number four, group H from Barangay, Pachoa, and other barangays. So what should be the answer for our problem number four? All right, it is either Mars or Jupiter. So since we can't divide Mars and Jupiter and find the, di the distance bit or the middle between them, then we can say that Mars and Jupiter is the median planet of our solar system. And last for our problem number five. For, for our problem number five, let's start. Okay, for our last question, problem number five. Group M from Mahal na Pangalan, do the honor. Please give your answer. Okay, the answer is no mode since there is no frequent number or grade in one asan. Then we can say that this is a set where in no mode. Are we clear? Okay. Since we're done with our lesson for today, let us summarize what we've discussed. Let's start with what are the measures of central tendency? Mean, median, and mode. Sir. Very good. Since we have mean, median, and mode. What is mean? The mean also known as average is the sum of item values divided by the number of items. All right. And how about the median? The median is the middle score for a set of data that has been arranged in order from least to greatest or vice versa. Excellent. How about what is the mode? The mode is the data value that appears the most in the set. Very good. Now class, is everything clear to you now? Yes, yes. sir. Do you have any questions? None, sir. Now that you already know the measures of central tendency, a summary is statistics. What do you think is the importance of studying it? Yes. The importance of studying the measures of central tendency is in order to know how and when the mean, median, and modes were used. Uh-huh. How about the other one? Measures of central tendency are very useful in statistics. 
their importance is because of the following reasons, to find representative value, to condense data, to make comparisons, helpful in further statistical analysis as a future researchers. Very good. Very well said. So as you can see class, statistics is around us. You don't even know before it, but now even your test scores used statistics to calculate it. Always remember that. Since we're done discussing our lesson, so let us go to our quiz 4.11. So the direction would be read and analyze the problem, and you're just going to match column A to column B. Write the, only the letter of your choice in your answer sheet. And after answering the question, you can decode what is the answer for your reader. And again, this quiz will only take 10 minutes only. So you need to answer diligently. So let's start.
Okay, so let's try to answer your quiz 4.11. So for our riddle, who is the one you believe that he exists but you did not see him ever? So after we answer question number 1, 2, and 3, we're going to find out who is that we believe that he did not, he exists. So for number 1, we have what is the mean score? So the mean score is 81.8. 81.8 is letter G. Correct. For number 2, we have letter O. So letter O is 82. And for number 3, we have letter D. So as I was saying, when we have the answers, we're going to find out the riddle. Who is the one you believe that he exists but you did not see him ever? And therefore, that is God. So for today's lesson, I hope you've learned something and new. So I hope that we will see each other again. And thank you for watching this video lesson. Goodbye class.